we all know who the real monster at the end of this book is. All of those people who actually believed that season 14's revelation was set back here. It wasn't. Hell, season 11's wasn't set here either. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hi guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 4, Episode 18, The Monster at the End of the Book. This is the first time we meet Chuck. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit to unload about that character. <laughs> but first, let's talk about the episode. The brothers come to this comic book store for no real actual reason. It's never actually explained why they're in there. They just come in and start asking questions, and the guy's like, Oh yeah, you're part of this book. Look at these rich Chad dudes on this book, bro. They find out that there is a series of novels based on them, which is written by Carver Enlin, which is a great kind of... A nod to Ben Enlin and Jeremy Carver, the two big story editors for the show at the time. And they go and meet Chuck, who is this has-been hack writer who's drunk all the time. Oh, by the way, though, they meet his publisher, who has actually been in the show three different times. A witch or something in 2006. I've been trying to find the episode, but I can't find that. And then she was in 2019, so she was in Supernatural season... She was at the end, the beginning of season 15, or the end of season 14, so that's kind of cool. But this is a known thing that Supernatural reuses a lot of actors in different roles over the years. When they meet Chuck, though, they find out that he is able to see into the future. He has these dreams, and he writes down his dreams because he has nightmares and he has headaches. They see that what he writes becomes to be. There's some good little twibs here and there. I do like the part where <laughs> like Dean says, hey, oh, those are definitely your pensive shoulders. Dean gets hit by the car. The, the Paula gets messed up. And then there's Lilith. Lilith's bit in this episode, it does make me scratch my head. The whole idea is that she wants to make a deal with Sam, lay with him, and then cut off both him and Dean's head, and that will stop the apocalypse. I don't know, I feel like they kind of got to this point of the story and they're like, we can't really give a good reason as to why this is happening, but we need this to happen so we can introduce the whole Archangel bit because we're going to use that at the end of the season. I feel that while this episode is trying to be its own good thing, it is much more of a platform to set up things that will come both at the end of this season and into season 5. Because on paper, and as it's played out, this episode's kind of dumb. The idea that Lilith wants to do this and Sam agrees to it, the fact that it's all happening around them and the angels don't even say anything about it, the fact that Dean says to Castiel, hey, Lilith's going to be here. You guys should probably do something about that. And they're like, oh, can't do it. It's the prophet of the Lord. What? It's a writing issue that I can see as the episode unfolds. It's like, wait a minute, they've written themselves into a corner here. They can't do much. I can see that they know how to end the episode, but they don't really know how to get there. And they're kind of kind of just all the way to the end, kind of like Zoidberg there. And then this kind of brings me back to Chuck. And Chuck here is completely displayed in a way that we as the viewing audience should not have any inclination that this guy is actually God. And I think it was said that they had never had any intention of him being so. The ending of season five was Kripke kind of laying down a Stephen King-like ending in terms of not giving you the answer, but giving you the ooh, what if kind of idea. Obviously season 11 and then season 14 and 15 would kind of just torture and destroy the character of Chuck. I don't mind what they did with him in season 11, if anything, I felt that that was proper in terms of what the season was doing to, oh, well, originally end, but then obviously it kept going. But season 15, no, no. Any of you who actually think this episode and the title of it, oh yeah, this is it, this is the monster's end of the book, Andrew Dabbs, here's some stuff that they set up in season four. <laughs> no, they never had any intention with this. They never even intended this character to be God at the end of season five. It was just really convenient title name. So I've been ripping on this episode a little bit, right? I like it. There's a lot of cool elements. I love the idea of Chuck being this drunk has-been who is, an, oddly enough, a prophet who writes really overdramatically. The fact that when he's talking about it, when he says dramatically hits the doorbell, that reminds me of what how I used to write when I was back in like high school and coming out of high school. I found out that I just, I'm not that great at writing long stories. I can do little short stories. It obviously takes a little bit of tenor and quite a bit 
of perseverance and self-criticism to write your own novel, so that's why I've just never tried that in my own life. But I did like that little tidbit, because that is a writing issue that some people go through. And I did like that Castiel kind of nonchalantly suggests Dean to use Chuck as a means of getting an archangel on them. And it's going to be used later on in the end of season four, which is going to be really cool. But the whole Lilith thing, man, it just really takes me out because when she appears and this whole little bit happens, it's like, this makes no sense. This is weird. It is slightly saved by Sam trying to kill her on the bed. Most likely that, you know, it wasn't going to happen, but it's still a little odd. Like I said, this isn't an episode that's trying to base itself on its own thing. It is clearly being used as a platform for what the next few episodes will use. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you want a really, really good example, Age of Ultron was that. Age of Ultron was essentially just setting up all of the other stories in the Marvel Universe for phase two, three, whichever. This is what this episode's kind of doing in a similar sense. So in the end, I'm gonna give the monster at the end of the book a four out of seven. I'm really perplexed that I'm giving it that low of a rating because like I said, it, it doesn't sit with me in certain aspects. Just some parts are just the whole Lilith bit. You see where they had an idea, but they couldn't make a good reason why it would happen. So they just took what was best that they could think of and they used that. I'm being very, very critical. This is probably the most critical I've been of an episode in a little while. And just to clarify, I rewatched the entire bit with Lilith just to see if I was being a little bit overcritical, but no, it, it, it's really stupid. But that's my long, long, long rant about this episode. Let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. All right, if you guys are still watching, uh, here are the comments. Monster at the end of the book, a terrifying peek at someone looking intimately at your life struggles and calling it contrived and mediocre like it was a weekly TBS show. I mean, what's scarier? Yeah, no, no. Man, TBS, actually, that's a pretty good reference. I haven't heard it. Oh yeah, I haven't seen you in a while actually either. Oh, thank you for commenting again. Is Chuck the monster at the end of the book or is it the reader? I think this is the first time meta satire is explored in the show and it's very funny. This show definitely gave Lilith a do-over because you couldn't use a child for obvious reasons, but I love her evil delight in child's blood. It was interesting to see the show have Dean try to break destiny when clearly it was more entrapment for Sam and Dean. I really love Castiel's character trying so hard to be faithful and uses his words carefully to help Dean, but the real meat of watching the episode is coming to the terms of the Chuck being the creator of Supernatural Universe proclaiming godhood. It's not until season 5 finale where you made the connections that there's more to him than being a lazy alcoholic writer. All in all, the episode makes sense in to introduce a prophet while angels are tactically min ministering on the earth. It's interesting the Winchester's Gospel are made as a fictional series instead of a prophet coming out to the world prophesizing Armageddon like preachers do in season 5 or adding scripture to the world. But it was more enjoyable to get a good laugh at, at the show itself. It's definitely one of the more, most memorable episodes of the season and not just because of the later events established in the show. Yeah, I like the bits with Chuck. Admittedly, I like it. It's just the, like you're actually saying about it, like the entrapment of how the episode proceeds is just kind of eh. like I said I, I don't like any of the bits with Lilith in it I love monster at the end of this book uh, in spite of the ridiculous or lazy retcon of dabs to make one think it's Chuck it's really Chuck it was Lilith I adore Chuck the prophet funny and confused helpful and guarded and in guarded awe of meeting his characters particularly liked his interactions with Sam without judgment he encourages Sam to examine his motives for drinking demon blood all uh, are all around funny yet tense and interesting episode yeah like i said i like the bits with chuck especially talking to them um those are definitely the hot the stronger parts of the episode i'll sound like a broken record if, but if i start on a rant about how badly they mutilated chuck in the end so i will just say love this episode hated what they do with his character can agree with that but I digress, this is an episode that's so meta and it was great to see. This is one of the episodes I'll watch over and over while pretending that seasons 14 and 15 didn't exist. The whole concept of them trying to do the opposite of what Chuck has written and the events that still led them to what he writes is funny and while watching it, I kept thinking of how much of a sense of humor God had to mess with Sam and Dean and this was before knowing Chuck was God. I also loved the little meta details such as the name of the diner being Kripke's Hollow and of course, Chuck's pen name, Carver. No, yeah, I like that uh, about Carver Enlund. In all in, in all, a really good episode, even though how badly they 
they uh, hear the character later. I'm guessing you talk about how they ruined him. But yeah, no, I, I like those little elements. Yeah, it's a decent ish meta there. This is one of my favorite episodes of the Kripke area that was unfortunately not only ruined by the crap dab poll, but also the fandom. Apparently fans, and especially reactors, are either hypocrites or have the attention span of a cricket because they use this episode as an excuse for that atrocious retcon that destroyed one of the best characters in the show. Because, yeah, Chuck isn't a loving creator who, even when is disappointed with his creations, was still giving them subtle advice like what he did with Sam and his demon blood. No, he was always evil, and this was always planned because he says he's a cruel god. That's just how it works, am I right? Yep, no, I, I hate this crap. I hate whenever people say that this was the episode that like was the beginning of it all it's like it's not as i point out in this episode they did not intend for him to be god and you know why this is especially pissing me off right now if you think about chuck from the pen name carver inland to his writing was clearly meant to representation of kripke carver and inland aka the three creative forces behind the show so making chuck evil destroying his character completely in the favor of that moron jack andrew dab is basically telling us that he did it better than by making the sixth worst character in the show into God. You talentless, uninspired hack. Yes, people, this guy is, is petty. And is, uh, and if, and as if that isn't bad enough, the fans have brought it into so completely that they go back to previous episodes and trash Chuck. Oh, I can't say that word. Uh, is the worst example of this. Just watch him react to the 200th episode. You have complained about the supernatural fandom, Jeremy, and on cases like this, I completely agree with you. Yeah, the fans just kind of took the whole Chuck thing a little bit too far, especially when it came to its origins. It's like, no, it didn't come from this far back, guys. It 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 was made up kind of on the spot, and it was it was admittedly kind of bleeding into the whole fandom of wanting him to be God. I admittedly thought, is he God? I was kind of curious of if they were going to ever confirm that, and they did in season eleven, and not a bad way, but. I digress. Love Monsters at the end of the book for its meta quality, and it was unique to me as an idea of meta episodes when I originally watched it. It wasn't a concept in my head. It never occurred to me that Chuck was literally God until Swan Song, but watching it now, I see myself enjoying it as I like the boys knowing their lives are books like other fictional books. What they did with Chuck later makes this ep watching this episode weird. I swear Dab got his idea for the for series ending from the title, Chuck being the monster at the end of the book, although we know for a fact that the, that, uh, that was not the intention with Chuck slash God originally. You watch this episode and you can see that they did not intend for him to go down this route. And that ambiguity that is the ending of Swan Song that leaves it open for interpretation too. Again, it kind of goes back to that whole aspect of Stephen King's writing. Yeah, Stephen King has made quotes before saying that you should leave stuff ambiguous because if you give them the answers, then people won't be satisfied. But if you leave enough of a nugget, they'll always be questioning, they'll always be interested. Kind of like J.J. Abrams writing, but if done well. And thank you guys once again for your comments. And now we've got Jump the Shark. Jump the Shark's gonna actually be a little fun. I'm gonna do a little fun ditty with that episode review. Well, there's a certain spot where they film that's uh, quite important to me. But in the meantime, give me you guys those comments about that episode, and I will read those off in the next review. And you know what? Just thinking about it now, give me your guys' thoughts on Chuck in this episode. Do you see any inclination of what you would think would have happened in Season 5, Season 11, and Season 15? What do you think when you see the character here as opposed to what we got at the end? Give me your guys' thoughts about that and I might turn that into a video on its own because this is a very pivotal point in the show that has now been completely butchered, in my opinion, by later seasons, but it's still a very interesting talking point. So give me guys his thoughts about that. If you guys liked the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.